Well, this is surprisingly enough Phil Spiro here at last. Better late than never, I always say. And especially when it involves people like Skip James and John Hurt, who are our guests today. And the delay is courtesy of the slowest restaurant in all of Cambridge, right? <laughs> John, it's good to see you again. It's been a long time since you've been in Boston, hasn't it? Yeah, been uh, pretty good. Been a while since I've been in Boston. And Skip, yeah. this is your first time here, isn't it? My first time. What do you think of it so far? I think it's very nice so far. I've been very courteously treated and entertained since I've been here, and I appreciate it very much. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Now, John, you're at the Unicorn through Saturday, isn't it? Right. And, Skippy, you'll be there with John on, what, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I believe? He'll be there or through the week, with the possible exception oh, of Wednesday. Oh, through the week, the whole week. Including Good. Tonight. The voice in the background is bearded Ed Denson of Piedmont Records. Say hello, Ed. Say hello, Ed. Thank you. I knew you'd say that. Well, we've spent so much time eating and waiting for that waitress. Why don't we spend some time on music? John? Yeah. You got something to play for us? Um, yeah, I think I've got something to play for you. I've got to... Louis College. Angel, let him away. 
Or when they heard that Lewis was dead All the people they dressed in red They could lay him away They could lay him away They laid him six feet under the clay They could lay him away Miss Collins moan to see her son who's leaving on They to lay him away They to lay him away They lay him six feet under the clay Uh, in case you just joined us, that's Mississippi John Hurt. And this is Folkside, starting off a little bit late, but better late than never, again for the second time this evening. And we're on WTBS in Cambridge. Well, John, you've got to get over to the unicorn in a fair spell, so why don't we hear another one from, or two from you before we go over and hear what Skip James sounds like. I know there are a lot of people in Boston who haven't heard Skip and would like to hear him. So like, you want to hear another one or two from me? Yeah, sure would. I'll tell you what, John. Uh, we've got Al Wilson here with us. Al plays a mighty fine harp, and I know you two have worked together before. Yeah. Why don't you two do one together? Come on, Al. How about cow hooking? <coughs> got to watch out for that mic. We've got all sorts of things in this studio. All set, gentlemen? All set.
Cowhucking Blues. That's, that's one you did the last time you were here with us, wasn't it? John, where have you been since we've seen you last? You've been all over the country, haven't you? <laughs> California? Yeah, California. You've been in Europe, too, or were you? Well, no, I haven't been to Europe. I came sick and didn't get to go that's to Europe. That's right. Yeah, but I've been in California, Los Angeles, and uh, Berkeley. What part of the country you seen that you like the best? Which part? Berkeley. You like Berkeley? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the climate or the people or what? Like the people and the climate too. <laughs> well, how about playing us another? trouble John gee I wish we had some more time that we could have started earlier but I know you've got to get along to the unicorn with Ed there so you all go down to the unicorn and see John there if you want to see him because that's where he'll be right <laughs> okay thank you very much John no, really wish you had more time but we have got Skip James here don't we <coughs> there he is coughing away <laughs> John and Skip are just shaking hands till they see each other again, because Skip is going to be down at the Unicorn also. I guess they'll be trading off sets. Skippy? Let's see. Uh, how long has it been since 
old John Fahey and, and Bill Barth and so forth uh, found you in, in that hospital in Tunica County. Couldn't be very long, could it? I give it about three months, I guess. I estimated that time. Three months. And how long How long has it been since you took up guitar again? Well, I uh, took up guitar recently after I came out of the hospital, about the second day. The second day, huh? So you've been playing pretty much since then. I've been playing pretty much since then. Well, we'd sure like to hear how that sounds here. Could you play us something? I would like to play you one. Well, we'd sure like to hear it. <coughs>
I'm going to ride in Lambo. Tell Shirley Ball come back to me. She got to come back to me. Cherry Ball Blues. That's one of the ones you recorded way back in the old days, wasn't it, Skip? Oh, I recorded part of it, but I put new rearrangements mm -hmm. in. All I play is my own version. I don't play copycat after nobody. I just play my own skip. Tell me something, Skip. How, how do you go about writing a song? Well, I compose a song on, the, on these terms in this way. Sometime I'll be laying down through the night and there are things will come to me. And I'll get up and jot it down. Maybe that's a talent of a song. Skip, you could make a song out of Sin City thing. Out of cigarette blues, the paperback blues, a Coca-Cola bottle, most anything. That's and then uh, I get up and jot that down. Perhaps, maybe, the next morning I say, this time I'm supposed to compose a song off of this. I let my leisure time, I sit down and just th look like things will come to me. I don't know why, just uh, just gene to that effect of that so uh, That's something I don't know what I can't fathom that out. But yet and still, things will just come to me. And I can get up through the night sometime and jump up and start to play and something I never heard. Well, you, you take it, it's just like that. When I get the words and just compose, and then I put my own music to it. That will be fitting to my composing. Uh, my rearrangements uh, oh, that's like I've arranged a song, I compose a song, and since it's such a tune, I, can, I get to get to a piano someplace, and I just I said, well, I play this in this key, I play this in this tune, and I put this to it and play it in this order. And that's, excuse me, that's the way most of that my music is. Well, tell now me. the devil blues, when I made that, mm -hmm. I, that's blues there, when I made the cherry ball just then. When I recorded that in Grafton, Wisconsin, it was a tall, slender girl standing right behind my back. She had two bunch of cherries right over each shoulder. And I dedicated that to that cherry ball. Because I haven't seen, she's very glamorous, all right, because I didn't know which one I liked best, her or the cherries, but still, <laughs> I haven't seen it a sense. <laughs> but anyway, and Illinois blues, when I made that blues, it was a red pocket kerchief around my neck and a big cowboy hat. Oh, yeah? And I was sitting on the side of a railroad. At least I had a railroad running through, you know, just like I was going. I was in Illinois and was catching the Illinois train or something. Mm -hmm. You know, referring to that. And the devil blues it. There was a devil in the shape of a devil with a fork and a long fork of tail. And that was the devil blues. And all the other blues that I made. Cypress Grove, I was in a grove where nothing but little trees in. That's why I was supposed to rather be buried there. Crow Jane, she was standing behind me. She's a tall, glamorous girl, too. And all night long, blues, when I made that, I was laying and kneeling, at least, which I was on my way lying down, but I was kneeling when they snapped it, I guess. And that was all night long. Make me one pallet on your floor. So closer to the door, nobody never know. All that, you know, what's the wood in the rhyme, that put the thing, but the title of it was all night long. And the other, other records, most every record that I made, it was something that, you know, was pertaining to the, the initiative of uh, the, the title of the record. Make it more comical, I guess, for the more, put more emphasis to the uh, uh, advertisement or the publicity or whatever uh -huh. the advertisement. They used to do a lot of that back then. Yeah. A lot of advertisements. Tell me, how many songs do you think you've written, uh, do you think you've written all told? Oh, at that time? Well, up uh, till now, up say. Up until now, well, I have no idea. That because many? Because I, I just, you know, sometimes I have so many requests that people like, and if I can play them, I play them. And then, but just my own version, I have pretty well about 30 or 40 
already arranged, but still there is more, there's always improvement. Mm -hmm. Music is never completed, and then composing either in case if you are inclined to that effect. And that's where I see it, because I can just, you know, maybe, today I said, well, I got 40. You see me to a day week, you say, well, skip it, I got any more. I said, maybe I have 10 or 12 more. See? That's just where that go. Depends, whatever I see that will fit in or be befitting for occasion. That's where I try to rhyme my music. Well, now, you mentioned Illinois blues. I don't think I've ever heard you do that. Could I you do that now? I don't know you have or not. <laughs> well, I know I haven't. Well, I Could you do that now? Sure. If you'll accept it. Sure will. Sure. Some blues, don't I? You like it? Oh, I sure do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was the one you said you you wrote when uh, you were catching the train there. Uh, yeah, I was at the old dilapidated depot down there. No. I had a big pocket handkerchief around my neck, and 
with a big old cowboy hat just like I was waiting for the Illinois train. Well, now I'll tell you, there's one song that's a favorite of mine that you do that you didn't mention, and that's I'm So Glad. Yeah. You still doing that song like you used to? Or? Oh, I don't know what I do like I used to, but I can do it, and if it suits you, I'll be glad to, and if it's not, well, I'll do it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's hear you do it. I'm sure <laughs> just do it. Yeah, what more can you say when you hear something like that? I guess you know now why why Skip James has has always been called the greatest blues man in the world, and that he is. Thank you. I'm glad you like those kind of things. Now here's a lot some more that you have heard that I like for you to hear when you have leisure time because it would be a help to me in the future, perhaps. And of course, I don't use this on, um, you know, this tuning all the time. Uh -huh. There's a lot I play in Spanish, then I play in cross note, and I play in natural. And then uh, other than that, I play most any key on the piano. Well, Skippy, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. And if you folks want to hear more of Skip James, you hurry on down the unicorn tonight, because well, he'll be you. there. Thank you. Well, again, I'm lamenting how little time we've got, and I see the time has just about run out. So I'll sign off by saying this has been Folkside. I'm Phil Spiro, and our guest tonight, we've been very privileged to have Mississippi John Hurt and very privileged indeed to have Skip James with us. Music tonight has been live. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Amelia. On November 3rd, an estimated 75 million Americans will go to the polls to choose between Lyndon Johnson and Barry Goldwater. For the educated listener, the November 3rd election results will best be handled by the University Broadcasting System and reported over WTBS AM and FM in Cambridge.